As companies face the imperative to disrupt or be disrupted, our next session looks at the innate human drive to innovate and how that intersects with technology. Recognised as one of the world's 10 most influential management thinkers, Wharton organisational psychologist Adam Grant is the author of multiple number one New York Times bestselling books, including his most recent, Think Again, and is a world-renowned TED speaker and podcaster. In conversation with Adam is Jeff Rader, co-founder and co-CEO of Harry's Inc. and co-founder of Warby Parker, two tech-enabled direct-to-consumer brands that have successfully challenged the status quo. Jeff, it's great to see you. Good to see you too. I want to start just by talking about your track record. You founded not just one, but two unicorns, both of which are direct to consumer businesses, both of which I dramatically underestimated. Uh, I'd love to, to find out how you see these companies. Are you in the tech business? Are you in the retail business? What are you? What do you do? I think first and foremost, we're brands um, that try to make people's lives and experiences better every day. Um, and I think we use technology as a way to reach customers, understand what they need, learn about them, and actually try to make their lives and experiences better. Um, an example that I've been thinking about of late at Harry's, uh, we launched um, a brand called Cat Person. People thought like, what are you doing launching a brand in the pet space? But we saw a big opportunity to um, make uh, lives and experiences better for cats and their parents and felt like they were second class citizens, but um, had to learn a lot about how to do that effectively. And so what we did is we started direct to consumer and started to get to know cats and parents and understand everything that we could about them and learn and then sort of, you know, had a perspective on how we thought we could make their lives better and use direct to consumer. You know, we did that by trying to create really high quality protein first food that was transparent that people could understand but then over time, tried to iterate the experience to make it better and better and better. And are still doing that like every day, just learning and growing and improving. And so I think technology is incredibly important in terms of enabling us to achieve our mission um, and learn about people and, and try to kind of do better for them. When you innovate and you're making a product that people actually want and doesn't exist in the world, like it's great. Like it works and you start swimming up, uh, downstream with, you know, the current's pushing you in the right direction. And sometimes if you innovate, because there's a big market, but you don't have something that's really unique or different, you know, it's just much, much harder. Um, and so, um, yeah, we think a lot about that. Our, our, our mission at Harry's, which we evolved a couple of years ago, is to create things people like more. And we think about that. If you can actually do that, like, that's good. Like, that'll be great for the business. And when we don't do that, I think that's sometimes when get off strategy a little bit. As someone who's sort of studied uh, lots of different aspects of corporate culture and psychology, um, how do you think uh, about sort of um, technology in general and how has it changed kind of established patterns? Um, do you think it is great for creativity and amplifies it? Um, does it limit innovation? Like, Can I say all of the above, Jeff? All of the yeah, above. Of course. Uh, I think, I mean, we've, we've all experienced the effects going both ways, right? On the one hand, technology can be a major constraint. Um, it's, it can become a source of blinders that limits the way that we see the world and the opportunities around us. And this is, by the way, this is not unique to technology. Any kind of experience that we build up over time with any set of tools or knowledge bases can, can sort of prevent us from seeing more widely, right? It can limit our peripheral vision. Um, some of the early research on this uh, looked at it in non-technical ways. Uh, there was evidence, for example, that if you were a highly experienced accountant, you were slower to adapt to new tax laws than a novice accountant because you were so used to the way that you'd always done things. Um, and similarly, highly experienced bridge players performed worse if you changed the rules up a little bit because they had an established pattern and all of a sudden they had to break it and they didn't even realize they were following it. And we see technology often having a similar effect. But it's also an enabler, right? We can think about all the ways that technology has unlocked creativity over the past couple of decades. And I think both Harry's and Warby are incredible examples of this, right? Where you took what were very traditional you know, kind of physical store models and said, we can disrupt that. Uh, we can do it thanks to the technology we have, um, but we're not gonna lose the human touch. And my hope is that instead of people being controlled by technology, they will choose to, to use it in service of this kind of creativity and innovation. Jeff, as, as we wrap up, is there a, a closing piece of advice on disruption and innovation that you'd like to offer? 
just focusing on, you know, kind of people first. And someone once said to me, like, you know, the best way to start a business is to walk around and just figure out what upsets you and then fix that thing. Um, as I think about some of the best businesses that have been built, like, you know, a lot of the, a lot of, I could sort of see how that problem statement in some ways, you know, turned into massive upside or something. Um, yeah. And then I guess the other thing is like, I wouldn't be afraid to take risk and dream. And I think that's where technology kind of come back to the beginning can play a really meaningful role in that you can learn a lot through technology. So the risks and some, you can move faster and the risks can feel smaller um, and you can scale quickly as you go. And so that's the thing that we've been thinking a lot about areas, which is we have intuition. How do we validate it quickly, you know, by talking to enough people to understand that and then further validate it with technology um, to sort of reach actual people and get their input and bring them into the journey with you, which we found ever since the very beginning of Warby Parker that lots of people are really excited to do. They want to feel part of it. Yeah. Well, that, that tracks with one of the most powerful lessons I've learned from you, which is to think about risk a little bit more like a stock portfolio. I think everybody at Macquarie knows that you don't want to have all of your eggs in one basket. You're going to run a diversified portfolio. And that means you need to have some safe bets and some more uncertain bets. And we do that when we're investing money. I think we forget to do it when it comes to investing in, in ideas that yes, of course, we should have some predictable successes. But if we don't also balance that out with some you know, high uncertainty, um, high risk, but also high potential return opportunities, we are going to be left in the dust. Amen. I agree. <laughs> well, great. Great to see you. Delighted to have a chance to catch up. 